Welcome to SciShow News. I'm Michael Aranda, in for Hank Green, and today we're talking about genes. I've got them, you've got them, they're natural. Someone asked me whether they belong in the public domain, I think my answer would be yes. But on Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court began hearing a weird case that raises a weirder question. Can someone own your genes? The fact is, more than 4,000 of your genes, over 40% of the human genome, have already been patented. Just as other companies patent nifty new inventions and secret formulas for soft drinks, private research firms have been patenting genes for years. But is this in the best interest of science? About 150,000 geneticists, pathologists, and laboratory professionals say, not so much. Among those who joined in this week's legal battle are the American Medical Association, the American Society of Human Genetics, and even James Watson, co-discoverer of DNA's double helix structure. They argue that gene patents tie the hands of genetic researchers. But some others say that if companies can't make money from genetic research, there won't be any incentive to do it. The case before the Supreme Court right now has to do with two of your genes, called BRCA1 and 2, which are shared by all humans. In the 1990s, a biotech company called Myriad found that certain mutations mutations on the genes predispose their carriers to breast and ovarian cancer. The company patented the genes and since then has gathered lots of data, developing tests that identify some of the dangerous mutations. But because of the patents, Myriad basically has a monopoly on anything that has to do with the genes. So if you think you have one of the mutations and you want to find out, your only choice, at least in the US, is to dish out about $3,000 to the company. And your doctor can't give you advice because nobody knows much about the genes except Myriad, which reportedly isn't sharing its data. All this got some organizations, including the American Civil Liberties Union and the Public Patent Foundation, pretty fired up in defense of patients. So in 2009, they sued. Obviously, we don't want to live in a world where scientists get sued all the time for doing science, but do gene patents actually make it harder for scientists to do their jobs? Since 1998, patent holders have sued scientists doing basic research on diseases from Alzheimer's to autism. In 2010, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services found that patent holders had prevented doctors and labs from offering tests for diseases like leukemia, Huntington's disease, and a heart condition called Long QT syndrome. Further back, in 2001, 49% of members of the American Society of Human Genetics said gene patents had limited their research. And in a 2003 survey, 53% of genetics labs reported that they had given up on research because of gene patents. For their part, Myriad and industry groups like the Biotechnology Industry Organization say that gene patents encourage science. Basically, they argue patents give them incentive to invest in genetic research. Mark Capone, president of Myriad Labs, says gene patents have made the BRCA genes two of the best understood human genes citing 18,000 scientists who have published 10,000 papers through the company. But these are your genes we're talking about, so what do you think? What's best for science? Collaboration and sharing, or good old-fashioned monetary incentive? Let us know what you think about this in the comments section below. Also, if you have any questions or ideas, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and if you want to keep up to date on all the latest breaking science news, you can go to youtube.com scishow and subscribe.